Here's Beth and Connie. Beth and her husband Trent own the Pine Ridge Motel with hand-pressed sheets and beautiful rustic suites. Connie runs the operation here and her family operates one of the motorized portages. Gary, and what? And you're from Tennessee, right? Kodak, Tennessee. I'm Dave Williams. I'm from Kodak, Tennessee. I'm Kirk Baltimore, from Knoxville. Here's Charlie's power plant. So it sounds like you guys caught some big fish and yeah. had the whole experience? It was fun. Yeah. What we really like down there, the uh, the smallies are better on the bottom half with all the rock structure down in okay. there. Okay, okay. There's a lot of bays that are rock filled. Uh -huh. um, a lot of where, uh, along the bays where you see some grass coming up the rocks, mm. that's really where we got a lot no of No kidding, yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, uh, but they were really good the last two days. She just hammered them. A lot of them, 14 to 19. Yeah, she Perfect timing. 18 and an 18 and a half. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. They were just <laughs> fat. Nice. Young lady, most of my fishing buddies would die for a fish like that. <laughs> yeah. Heading straight east from the drop off to campsite that the folks I just talked to had just left. And uh, hopefully get there, get set up before the rain hits, and then basically use this as our campsite to get all set up and acclimated and begin this fantastic voyage. The other guys from the boat, they're gonna camp on the island just beyond mine. So we'll be seeing a little bit of those guys. Been huddling under the tarp for a while. Storms blew in, and then it starts to look like it's clearing up, and I get excited to ready to go fishing, and then wham, here we go again. So I'm gonna take a walk over here to the edge.
Not going out in that. Here we are coming into the country club, the campsite kitchen with dining room. You are so wonderful, man. Thank you so much. You're going to change my life. You're going to change my life with this. Okay, now this, I'm going to tell you though, it only works really good this time of year. Oh, right. Yeah, right. You can catch them later in the year, but if you want to catch numbers, Now's the time. I just spent a while talking to these gentlemen, and they are all... Tennessee hillbillies. <laughs> they are all off the charts, <laughs> talent-wise, genius-wise in their areas. Frank over here, who just celebrated his 80th birthday, put this system together look at that one filter wasn't enough he had to add a supplemental filter onto that the one on the bottom cost three hundred fifty dollars <laughs> go through it in a day's time if you don't pre-filter it unbelievable two microns two of them. No, we won't be they won't be any more of those two microns yeah
just leaving our first campsite. You know, I always like to point out the big oak trees that I see. And look at this beauty. Look at that. Here we are, moving out from our first campsite. Called Curbside Coffee Service from my friends from Tennessee. Yeah, this is Starbucks on the road. Look at that. Did you hear what he said? Starbucks. Starbucks on the road. Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Enjoy. Here we are on the mighty Lac LaCroix. We are now heading right across the biggest part of the lake. We're going southeasterly. Gonna eventually get into some smaller waters and find a campsite here in a couple of hours. We'll troll our way across this big bad boy lake now just to give you a feel for what we're looking at here. You want to get a feeling for privacy. Nice big water. Here we go, heading across LaCroix. Eight o'clock, time to go after some bass. Here we go.
Woke up to some uh, heavy rain. Hopefully it won't last all day. I I'm gonna just hang out under the tarp for a little while, let this rain pass over. Well, it's around noon. It's moving towards the far end of La Croix. Find a nice campsite, have a layover day, and then fish that area over there. It's about mid 80s, supposed to get to 90 today. Biggest challenge. And it's a nice problem to have, is staying cool. That's why I'm traveling full commando, drinking 18 ounces of water every half hour, keeping totally covered up from the sun. So here we go. Just pick one up on the trolling rod. Let's check out this new site. way up here in this bass filled area and then lake trout out on the water so what a great spot for a layover day to do some heavy fishing and there is nobody here look at all that firewood look at that that firewood's been here challenge. Okay. Tent pad. Tent pad. Mm. Okay, so. Okay, there's the trail of the latrine. Okay, here's our last chance. Last chance. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Level and soft. How do you like that? And I don't really see any big dangers overhead. Those are all live branches. Home, sweet home. So I showed this campsite a little loving and created a nice tent site right here. Check this out. Of course I had to clear the view, open up the woods for a little breeze, basically removed all the dead wood and then cleared some lines of sight.
Now I'm gonna just seal the tent up before I go fishing. Here we are in a campsite, popped right in the middle of this fantastic bass fishing. They are just everywhere. Wacky worm. Smallmouth are everywhere. Smallmouth fillets, four cheese, mashed potatoes, hollandaise sauce, big pack. You know, it's getting to be a little bit of a problem here. These doggone turtles are walking right under my feet. Had to stop to get some ballast for the front of the boat. So I thought I'd grab some firewood too. As long as these beautiful pieces are right here. To me, this is the best wood in the world. There it is. There's my rock. Right there. That'll spell the difference between balance and imbalance. So important. Oh man, what happened there? So we're gonna stick this on top of the other rock that's there, which by itself wasn't quite enough. I've got a pretty big one in the back too. Another beauty. Just big one after big one in here. It's amazing. Watch this. Ah, look at that.
just packing up here. It's about 5.30. Getting ready to leave the northern part of LaCroix here. Beautiful morning. Never did rain last night. Sure looked like it was. Saw one flash of lightning and heard some distant thunder. But never really did. And then let's check in with our resident snapping turtle. What do you say, big guy? What's on your agenda for today? Ten mosquitoes. Well, we just landed on our campsite. And what I'm gonna do now is take a bath and then go fishing all day. It's so hot, I just washed my clothes and I'm wearing them wet. Look at that little beat up.
get beat up. That's from fanning the nest. Look at that. So I just added 18 ounces of water to my mesquite barbecue mix and Mexican rice and beans. Still got a heavy marinade in there and then rice and beans and now I'm going to add in, okay, I'm going to mix it all up. As soon as it starts to steam, we set our watch for 20 minutes and it's ready. Warrior Hill. I really cannot wait to climb that thing. Because if you notice, that ridge line runs all the way down over to there. So I think you could probably get in over there and march the entire ridge. Or could just start there and go straight up. And holy cow, these guys caught some big fish on the trip too. Big northern, big bass. Right where I'm headed. Hiking boots to water shoes. 
really important. Got to have that ankle support on the trail. But now that I'm going to be walking in the water, I want to keep those boots dry. around Curtin Falls. Uh, two guys I just talked to caught some really big fish right at the foot of this. Of course, it's always good fishing at the base. But right when I was coming across the lake, I noticed three canoes heading right this way. A couple of guys beat me to the punch. So I'm gonna let them have this spot and I will move on. We need some ballast. Get our profile down a little bit. Gotta get that bow down too. Just see I could not turn into that thing. I'm hiding behind this island. Now I gotta face the music. I gotta paddle straight south along that shoreline for quite a ways. Okay, just landed at the first possible site. Let's take a look here. Tent pad right here, too exposed, too close to the fire. Nice view, open rocky area there. Look at this, right here, 
Oh, very possible, very possible. Ooh, this looks nice here. Be a nice breeze somewhere up here. and level well suffice to say there's more than one good spot Always have a trail. Just saw an otter. catching primarily these little tiny northern bass on Crooked Lake, I think are done. So here's an interesting find. I'm right off the island that I'm camping on. Just came upon this spot right here. It's perfect spawning area. These are actual spawning beds right here. Look at that, perfect spawning area and absolutely devoid of bass. So that tells me the bass are done here. So it's time to move on. We're heading east. I'm in a place now where I camped before many years ago in Quetco, right on the border. Believe it or not, there's something really special at this campsite. You're gonna say, holy cow. Not much of a campsite. Just a tent pad and falling apart fire ring. It hasn't been used in a long time. Maybe I was the last one to use it. But here's that special item I mentioned. Can you believe it? Look at that. <laughs> There's the brakes. Look at the engine black. Look at that. Is that amazing? Here's some old cable from the logging days.
Getting into the Basswood River. Notice the spot here on the right? This might just be right. Look at that. Ho, ho, ho. Oh my gosh. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Where are we gonna lay our head? Wow. Oh, look at this. Oh my gosh, what a fantastic sight. God, I love this place. And we know where that leads. Okay, I didn't want to go all the way up because the boat is not properly tied. Oh man, this is gorgeous. Look at this. I'll be catching fish right from the bank here. Home, sweet home. Just had to make note of this. This has to be the biggest white pine I've seen on this trip so far. So we are going to put our fillets with four cheese pasta and hollandaise sauce into the cook pot and that will bake. Really getting a good one. A lot of rain, lightning, thunder. First really bad storm. Or good storm, I guess you would say. So anyway, let's hope everything stays intact. It's right over the top of us now. Lightning just struck a tree really close by. It basically sounds like an explosion. So we are right right in the center of it now. Fortunately, there's a good spot for... Man, that's close. That lightning is hitting right around me. Anyway, just part of the fun. That is lightning hitting trees. You don't think lightning's a powerful thing? Think again. In fact, lightning's probably the second biggest killer up here. Wow, here it comes. Here it comes. Well, survived the rainstorm. Holy cow, that was some really close lightning. Here we are morning after the big rain. As you can see, there's clearing going on. Here we go. Thank you. 
careful because very slippery. It'd be super easy to take a spill. In fact, here comes a spot where you got to choose between rock and hard hill roots. I got to take the roots. coming up here. Over here at Wheelbell Rapids, you can hear them. And let's get a look at the water. Running a lot higher than last time I was here in September. It'll be interesting to compare that image from then to now. Here we go. The beauty of this trail though is, once you get up to elevation, it's really flat and beautiful, straight, smooth. Look at that. Well, it took 26 minutes to make that first trip full, so it'll probably be about 20 minutes empty, I'm thinking. We are two-thirds done, heading back now to get the boat. So that'll be my last two miles of hiking in this heat. Beautiful basswood heading right into that opening there. Straight in. I'm actually on the Quetico side now, but since it's so calm, I'm just gonna shoot straight across there and make some distance. There is a magnificent cedar tree. Limb coming out on that is the size of a big tree trunk. We have paddled by probably a dozen campsites. But it's a beautiful night and you know, nice to cover that distance. Thank you. 
Well, here's the last night on Basswood. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be traveling south, right to where that wall is between those islands. And then I'm gonna hang a hard east. Probably a two or three hour paddle, not bad. And you know, I've been getting up so early because of the heat that, uh, well, the heat and the noise. You know, around here at about 4.30, it's crazy. The birds, especially the birds. When a man has traveled the wilderness most of his life, his earliest memories steeped in beauty and the joys such experience gives, when he has watched the changes that have come not only to the land itself, but to the people, their attitudes and the world, now entirely different from the one he first knew, it is only natural to reflect on countless explorations and interpret them in the light of the slow filtrations into consciousness of an almost forgotten way of life. It becomes, in a sense, a distillation of how he feels and looks at things, the development of a point of view that encompasses his understanding of man's long relationship to nature, all living things, and the universe itself. In a book as brief as this, it's impossible to cover everything. But as I go through the process of remembering and trying to invest my recollections with meaning, readers may find the answers to questions they also may have raised. Whether I talk of timelessness, cosmic rhythms, and the slow cycles of seasonal change, or look at such personal things as aliveness, wonder, and wholeness, or attempt to enter the dark infinities of mystery and the unknown. It makes little difference. What really matters is a broad perspective woven through the fabric of them all, a long view of a naturalist and wanderer through wild country and all he has written and thought about over the years. This collection of essays is a partial summing up of my personal beliefs, and I hope those who travel with me may hear that almost imperceptible note of harmony that runs through the grand symphony of the land I have known. across basswood. Not a headwind, one of the very first times in the whole trip. But easterlies are common in the morning up here. It'll shift soon, hopefully, as it warms up. Here's the sign with brush growing in front of it. Stuff blowing down. Nobody here. Sitting here in the shade, 
waiting for the towboat. I'll tell you, it's so nice having the laterals here at Prairie Portage. They are so reliable.